going to turn our attention to UFC 258 and beyond. It took place this past weekend here in Las Vegas. And to figure out what shook down and what's coming, Brett Okamoto, kind enough to join us here on Bet. Brett, appreciate the time. As always, let's start with this. Kamaru Usman was still dripping sweat from his third round TKO over Gilbert Burns Saturday night when he made it clear he wants to fight Jorge Masvidal next. Usman could pretty much name any opponent at this point, it seems like. So why go after Masvidal, who he beat last year? Well, it's the fight that pays him the most, and quite frankly, it might be the easiest fight for him because, you know, Usman is known as a primarily a wrestler, and Jorge is, is a striker. He's not a huge guy for 170 pounds, and although he's got some defensive wrestling, I wouldn't count him out in a rematch against Kamara Usman when they fought last year. Jorge took that fight on six days' notice, so that's that's a tough ass to beat a champion on six days' notice. But uh, Jorge has the biggest name. You know, he's got a really big following. Um, he's turned into kind of one of the top five superstars in the UFC. So if I'm Kamaru Usman, I'm getting a lot. I'm getting the more more pay-per-views I sell, the more money I make. And on top of that, I think I can uh, I can wrestle Masvidal to death again for the second time in, in a year. So if I'm Usman, I'm probably making that same call out. Yeah, uh, money, pay-per-view buys, that logic is very tough to disagree with. Let's get caught up on some of the big names in the fight game. We haven't seen Amanda Nunez since last June. She is a massive minus 1,100 favorite over Megan Anderson at UFC 259. Does this fight, in your opinion, get past the second round? Past the second round? I don't know. Probably not, man. I mean, Amanda Nunez, she comes out just guns blazing every time. She just has... She, she just shows, shows no regard for her opponent's power. I mean, that's that's something we talk about in combat sports is that you have to get your opponent to respect your power, and Amanda Nunes doesn't respect anybody. I mean, she's she's a great lady. She respects them from that standpoint, but as far as, you know, being being afraid of what they're throwing back at her, she has the utmost confidence, and so, so she lets her hands go. And we've seen, I mean, she knocked out Chris Cyborg in, in very, very quick fashion, knocked out Holly Holm with a head kick when Holly Holm is known as a kickboxer. Like, this woman is just on absolute fire, and Megan, while she is a full-size 145-pounder, she's a big girl. I think that that'll help her. That'll be something maybe Amanda Nunes hasn't quite seen. Probably the biggest opponent she will have ever fought. Um, she gets hit a lot. So either way, no, I don't think it's going It's going past two rounds. I think Amanda could, could probably get it done in one. Conor McGregor's been asking for a rematch, which would be a trilogy with Dustin Poirier, who he just lost to. Dana White said that's something that could happen this summer. Regardless of who McGregor fights, how confident are you in him beating any big-name fighters at this point based on what we just saw against Poirier? I'm still kind of confident, man. And um, But I'll tell you what, right, right now it's like a 50-50 proposition for Conor McGregor because, I mean, his talent hasn't gone anywhere. The talent is still there. Um, he still he still hits hard. He still is very very mentally strong. I believe um, Even though it was a little bit of a different feel going into the Dustin Poirier fight He wasn't talking as much trash. He wasn't commanding the room as much as he usually does But I still think all the ingredients that made Conor McGregor a superstar. He still has them I just don't know if he has the motivation. I don't and that is you know in fight week I don't know if he has the motivation in the gym this was the big question when he went off and fought Floyd Mayweather in 2017. He was going to make millions and millions and millions of dollars. And so that's great for him, great for his family. I'm happy for him, love to see it. But what would that do to the rest of his career? And so far, the rest of his career has been a little bit of a mixed bag. So I think we're going to find out. I think we're going to find out in that trilogy fight with Dustin Poirier, win or lose. You know, does he make some adjustments? Does he, does he, uh, it, it, does he make the adjustments specifically to that leg kick that was, that was busting him up the, first, the second time they fought? Um, and we're going to find out. But right now, I would say 50-50 on him. But I'm leaning more towards, yeah, he can still beat some of the elite guys. Final question for you. Habib Nurmagomedov has made it clear that he would come out of retirement possibly for one more fight. So what are the odds, in your opinion, that we see him fight again? And whom would that be against? Yeah, well, he really hasn't actually made it clear that uh, that he would come back. I mean, he he has spoken in the past that there was one fight that would bring him back, and that is against George St. Pierre, but that's not really a fight the UFC is interested in making. George, as recently as, as even today, has come out and said that, you know, he's retired. He's only had one fight, I think, in like the last six, seven years. So we're talking about two guys who are basically kind of done. I do think that if there is a fight that would bring Habib back, it's it's if this lightweight division settles without him and then there is some guy, whether that's guy, whether that's Conor McGregor or whether it's someone else that maybe Habib hasn't defeated before that is able to separate himself, rise to the top, and people are saying, man, that guy maybe could beat, uh, beat Habib. I think the competitor that he is would want to come back and prove that wrong. But I don't know, man. I got to say, I think there's probably a less than 10% chance that Habib ever fights again.
Brett Okamoto, ESPN MMA analyst, kind enough to join us here on Bet. Brett, we always appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Anytime, guys. See ya.